In this video, we're going to deal with a little bit more of our static files. In previous videos, I have gone over how to set up static files for you to serve your users. But one thing that is a little confusing is how do you deal with caching? Specifically, really popular right now, it has been to add some sort of hash in the middle of your static file name so that your CDN can take that and push that out across the internet and it be available for everyone to use. And then anyone that has a page cached with that particular hash in there, it can just access that in the future. And then anytime you change the code in there, it generates a new hash for your file. And then that new one gets loaded up while the old one is still available. Without having that hash, every time you update your main.js or some file like that, then it would automatically update it and the old version would be unavailable, potentially breaking things for people. So that's what we're going to go over is how do you get that little hash in the middle of your file name so that you can more easily bust caches or just automatically have people start getting the new version when it's available while still hosting the old version of the file. The common technique is to take a file, get the MD5 hash of it and put that in the middle of the name. And then you always have something unique. And every time you generate your files, it just constantly keeps adding a new file to your static folder. Well, to do that in Django, you use something called the manifest static file storage. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our project. If we we'll open it up in our browser, you can see we get an alert hello world I did this just to show that JavaScript is running and then you can see we have a centered content and images and stuff like that so you can see CSS is running if we look at our page source code you can see it's getting static slash CSS slash main CSS and same thing static JS main dot JS so it's pulling in our JavaScript and CSS but note there is no hash this is the default behavior in Django and especially on development if we'll go ahead and look at our project a little bit you'll see we have a normal file file and folder structure. We have demo, which is our project, static and templates. If we look at our static folder, I've created a CSS, image and JS folder and inside of those is their relevant files. And if we we'll go ahead and look at our index.html of our Django template, you can see we have a basic HTML page. I've loaded in the static tag from static files app. And then if you'll go down and look, you'll see we have JavaScript and CSS where we're calling the static tag and saying, hey, I'm with the CSS main.css or JS slash main.js and it knows where to go look for that and generates that URL for us. In order to have the hashed URL paths that we need, you have to use this static tag. You can't hard code in the path for the static files. Finally, let's go ahead and look at our settings. It's a standard settings file and if we'll jump to the bottom, we can look at what we need for our static files. We have static URL, which says it's going to be static in the URL to get our static assets. Static files dirs says, hey, look in all of these locations for static files. In this case, we're just saying, hey, look in the static folder. And then for production, we have static root. And this is where when we do collect static, it's going to dump all of our collected files and do any processing that needs to take place. It's going to put it in the base of our project in the static files folder. and It'll create it if it needs to. So we only need to add one line to get our new manifest backend storage for our static files. And that's to add the static files underscore storage setting and set it to Django contrib static file storage manifest static file storage. And you're ready to start using it. However, if you actually want to use it in production and you want to use it here locally, first we need to set debug equal to false. Otherwise, it's not going to generate the files because it's assuming we're in development mode. So with that said, let's go ahead and do a collect static. So do manage collect static. It confirms that we want to we'll say yes and poof we get all of this stuff if you look at the last two lines it has css main.css and js main.js and it's saving those as whatever they are with a hash in the middle so it is generating it we can actually go ahead and see this if we'll lslha our static files js you'll see we have a main.js of our original file and then we have a one with a hash in it same thing with our css it still needs those originals in case we reference them for some reason but generally it's going to reference it it with the hash inside of it. So in order to show that it generates a new one every time, let's go ahead and add a couple of lines to our CSS and we'll add border and padding to our image. So we get a nice little bitty outline around our image. So now if we'll run our collect static again, generates more static files, this time a few less, but again, it generated our main CSS file. If we'll ls our static files location, you'll see we have main.6ad9935 blah 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 CSS and we have our main 73 
M370E, blah, blah, blah. These are two different MD5 hashes for these files. So it keeps both in reference so they can always be accessed in case some caching takes place of a page and it's referencing one of the old ones. To see that our app is actually referencing these, let's go ahead and look at it in our browser. You'll see that none of the styling is there. That's because our development environment doesn't know where to look for the static files. And that's why in production, you would need to point your Nginx to your static files location to pull in the right files from the right place. What we really want to see is the generated code. So if we'll open up our source code, you'll see it's pulling in static main and it's pulling in the latest 7370E0 da 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 da. And then the same thing for the main.js. So it is successfully using the hashed version when it's pulling it in. And if we had Nginx or something in front of this, you'd be able to see the results. So you might be wondering, how does the static file storage know to use that proper hash? Well, if you look in the static files folder that's generated, there will be a static files.json. If we'll search for our main.js, you'll see that we have main.js as a key. And then as a value, we have main.9ea. AF, da, da, da. Same thing with CSS. If you look at a little bit before it, it has the 737. What's happening here is the static file app on the back end, instead of MD5 hashing the static files every single time, it loads the page, which can be resource intensive. It just generates those hashes and it saves it to the static files.json. And then when it needs to serve something, it just pulls in the value from here, saving you processing time. And then every time you run the collect static, it'll just either add something to this JSON or it will pull the data that it needs and replace it as needed. So that's it. That's all there really is to using the manifest static file storage system so that you get these hashed URLs and so that you can more easily cache bust your files into the future or still serve old cached JavaScript and CSS.